The term hacking has been around for quite a long time now. The first recorded instance of hacking dates back to the early 1960s in MIT, where both the terms hacking and hacker was coined. Since then, hacking has evolved into a broadly followed discipline for the computing community. Hi guys, my name is Arya, and today we are going to go through the fundamentals of hacking and particularly ethical hacking. This is the first video in a long list of videos, and they're going to be a part of the ethical hacking playlist. So hold on tight because this is going to be interesting, right? To say the least. Okay, so let's begin with what exactly is hacking. So hacking is the process of finding vulnerabilities in a system and using these found vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access into the system to perform malicious activities ranging from deleting system files or stealing sensitive information. Hacking is illegal and can lead to extreme consequences if you're caught in the act. People have been sentenced to years and years of imprisonment because of hacking. Nonetheless, hacking can be legal if done with permission. Computer experts are often hired by companies to hack into their systems to find out vulnerabilities and weak endpoints so that they can be fixed. This is done as a precautionary measure against legitimate hackers who have malicious intents. Such people who hack into a system with permission without any malicious intent are known as ethical hackers and the process is known as ethical hacking. So now that we know exactly what ethical hacking is and who ethical hackers are, let's go over the different types of hackers. So firstly, we have white hat hackers. Now white hat hackers is another name for an ethical hacker. They hack into a system with prior permission to find out vulnerabilities so that they can be fixed before a person with malicious intents finds them and does his job with it. After that, we have black hat hackers. Now black hat hackers, also known as crackers, are those who hack in order to gain unauthorized access to a system and harm its operations or steal sensitive information. Black hat hacking is illegal and has always been illegal because of its malicious intent, which includes stealing corporate data, violating privacy, damaging the system, blocking network communications and much more. Following which we have gray hat hackers. Now gray hat hackers are a blend of both black hat and white hat hackers. They act without malicious intent, but for their own fun. They exploit a security weakness in a computer system or network without the owner's permission or knowledge. Their intent is to bring the weakness to the attention of the owners and getting appreciation in form of a little bounty from the owners. Last but not least, there are suicide hackers. Last but not least, we have suicide hackers. Now, a suicide hacker is a person who works with the intent to bring down major corporations and infrastructure. These kinds of hackers are not scared of the consequences of their actions as they mostly work with vengeance in their mind. These people are also called hacktivists because they mostly utilize the technology to announce a social ideological reform or some religious reform or a political message. In general, most hacktivism involves a website defecament or denial of service attacks. Okay, so now that we've discussed the different kinds of hackers that are there, let's go through the different kinds of hacks that exist in the world. Now that we have discussed the various types of hackers, let's go with the different types of hacking. Now we can segregate hacking into different types depending on what the hacker is trying to achieve. Firstly, we have computer hacking. So this is the process of stealing the computer ID and password by applying hacking methods and getting unauthorized access to a computer system. Secondly, we have password hacking. Now this is the process of recovering secret passwords from data that has been stored in or transmitted by a computer system. Thirdly, we have email hacking. Now, this includes gaining unauthorized access to an email account and using it without taking the consent of its owner for sending out spam links, third party threats and other such harmful activities. Fourthly, we have network hacking. Now, hacking a network means gathering information about a network using a tool like Telnet, NSLOOKUP, Ping, Tracer or Netstat. Now, these are done with the intent to harm the network system and or hamper its operations. Last but not the least is the most common type of hacking, which is website hacking. Now hacking a website means taking unauthorized control over a web server and its associated software such as a database and other interfaces. Now hacking can also be segregated into many more classifications, but these are the five major types of hacking that exist today. Okay, now like every discipline out there in the world, ethical hacking too is divided into distinct phases. Ethical hacking has six distinct phases. Now these phases are not strict rules, but more like a guideline to be followed. Now the first step or phase of ethical hacking is called reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is the process of information gathering. In this phase, the hacker gathers relevant information regarding the target system. These include detecting services, operating system, packet hops to reach the system, IP configurations, etc. 
and for this purpose various tools like nmap hping and google docs are used for reconnaissance purposes Secondly is scanning. Now in the scanning phase, the hacker begins to actively probe the target machine or network for vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Tools like Nessus, Nexpose and Nmap are widely used by hackers and ethical hackers alike in this process. Third part is one of the most important parts. This is called gaining access. Now in this phase, the vulnerability located during scanning is exploited using various methods and hackers try to enter the target system without raising any alarm. The primary tool that is used in this process is called Metasploit. Now, if you guys want to know more about Metasploit, you can definitely check out my penetration testing tutorial that I have up on the cybersecurity playlist. It's a pretty good Metasploit tutorial. I'll be making more in the future, so hold on to that. Now, the fourth part is maintaining access. Now, this is one of the most integral phases. In this phase, the hacker installs various backdoors and payloads onto the target system. Just in case you don't know, payload is a term used for activities performed on a system after gaining unauthorized access to it. Secondly, backdoors help the hackers gain quicker access onto the target system in the future whenever they want to do so. Now, the fifth part is clearing tracks. Now, this part is an unethical activity. It has to do with the deletion of logs of all the activities that take place during the hacking session. Nonetheless, ethical hackers still have to perform this phase to demonstrate how a black hat hacker would go about his activities on the system that is being targeted. Now, last but not the least is reporting. Reporting is the last step of finishing the ethical hacking process. Here, the ethical hacker compiles a report with his findings and the job that was done, such as tools used, the success rate, vulnerabilities found and exploit processes. OK, so now let's discuss reconnaissance a bit more. I've already mentioned that it is the process of gathering information about the target system, but what kind of information are we trying to gather? Well, to list them out would be a task, but they can be boiled down to the following. Firstly, we are trying to gather some initial information about the network, like the DNS as such. Then we try to determine the network range. Thirdly, we try to identify active machines that are on the network. Fourth, we try to discover open ports and more access points into the system. Fifth is fingerprinting, that is trying to figure out what operating system is actually running on the network. Then we try to uncover the service ports that are that we are trying to target through ethical hacking. And we also try to map the network and how it's actually working. Now these topics will be discussed in details in the upcoming videos, but for now let's focus on active and passive reconnaissance. Now Reconnaissance is of two types, active and passive. So active reconnaissance refers to the process when you, the hacker, directly interact with the computer system to gain information. This information can be relevant and accurate, but there is a risk of getting detected if you're planning active reconnaissance without permission. If you are detected, then system admins can take severe actions against you and trail your subsequent activities. Then we have passive reconnaissance. Passive reconnaissance is exactly the opposite of active reconnaissance. That means you, the hacker, don't have any direct interactions with the computer. This process is used to gather essential information without ever interacting with the target system. Okay, now getting deeper into reconnaissance, we can talk about two more things. That is footprinting. Now footprinting is basically the first step where a hacker gathers as much information as possible to find the ways to intrude into a target system or at least decide what types of attacks will be more suitable for the target. Now footprinting is a part of reconnaissance process which is used for gathering possible information about a target's computer system or network. Footprinting could be both passive and active. For example, reviewing a company's website is a very good example of passive footprinting. Whereas attempting to gain access to sensitive information through social engineering is an example of active information gathering or active footprinting. Now during this phase, an ethical hacker can collect some information like the domain name, the IP address, namespaces, employee information, phone numbers, emails, and job information. Now, let me just show you guys how easily footprinting can be done from your own computer. Now, you as a user can extract the basic and easily accessible information about any computer system or network that is linked to the internet. General footprinting can be done by anybody in all honesty. Now, let me show you how. So firstly, suppose you want to know the domain name information. You can just do this by going online. Let's just open a new window. So who is is a method of actually knowing the domain name specification. So suppose I want to know the domain name of something like edureka.com. So I just search and it'll give me all the information about it. 
So like you can see, it's the domain name is edureka.co. It's registered under the network solutions. You can go and find the registered date, when it'll expire, when it was last updated, the status that it has some client transfer prohibited. Then we can see the person it's registered under, like it's registered under this person called Kapil and it's in Karnataka, India. Now we find a lot of information regarding the domain server that we are running on. Now this was very easily done by just going onto a site called Whois and just typing in our domain name. We can also find the IP address of edureka.co. For example, if you were to go on your command prompt, suppose you want to know the public IP address of any web server. For example, I'll be using edureka.co. All you have to do is try and ping that web server edureka.co and you just ping it. Now you see that we are pinging. Now this is the public IP address of edureka.co and it was very easily found out with a very simple command. So this is how a hacker generally goes through his day. He, if he's trying to gather some information about some target system, he will just ping that address. You can also find the hosting company. So let me just show you how to do that. So for that, you just go on Google and on the site called IP to location. Click on the first link. So it shows me information about my IP at this moment. So you can go on this IP locator demo out here and enter an IP address. So suppose we enter this IP address that we just found out. So a hacker is trying to target edureka.co. So now he's found out the IP address. He could just simply go on IP locator and find out some more information about this web server. So as you guys can see, it's in the United States. It's the ISP is Amazon technology. So it's basically an Amazon web server. It's where the station is in Portland. And there's a lot of other information out there. Now you can also find out the history of a website like edureka.co by just going to archives.co. So you go to archive.org. So if you want to know the history of a website or a target system that you are going to target as an ethical hacker, People normally use this place called archive.org. Now suppose I want to know the history of Eddie Reka's website. So I go in and type that. And firstly, it'll show me when archive.co has crawled through Eddie Reka's website. So these are the dates it has crawled through. Now you can ask for a summary of this website and it'll give you some important information like how much text has been captured, how many images were captured in PNG format, how many images were caught in the JPEG format? How many JavaScript applications or JavaScript scripts are there? The amount of CSS. It gives a lot of information to an ethical hacker that, to work on. That is information to make him decide what kind of attack he's actually going to perform. So here you can see a summary of the host domain and the TLD. And you can also see the MIME type summary out here. So these are a few easy ways. Anybody at home can gather some information about any system. Now you can also refer to my nmap tutorial. Let me just show you. Out here you can also refer to my nmap tutorial, which I've, I've done a pretty good job at explaining nmap and how you can use nmap as a tool to get a lot of information regarding any system. Okay, so that's more for an nmap tutorial. Now let's move ahead with our phases of ethical hacking. Now, next phase is actually fingerprinting, and this is the last phase that we're going to discuss for this video today. So fingerprinting in ethical hacking refers to any method that is used to determine the operating system that is being run on a target computer. Fingerprinting, much like footprinting, is both active and passive. Active fingerprinting is accomplished by sending specifically crafted packets to a target machine and then noting down its response and analyzing the gathered information to determine the target operating system. Now, as I just drew your attention to my NMAP tutorial, I have also shown in that same tutorial how you can do some active fingerprinting using Nmap. Now there we have also some passive fingerprinting. Now passive fingerprinting is based on sniffer traces from the remote system and based on sniffer traces such as Wireshark of the packets, you can determine the operating system of the remote host. Now before attacking a system, it is required that you know what operating system is hosting a website and once the target OS is known, then it becomes easy to determine which vulnerabilities might be present to exploit the target system. 
The fingerprinting is done through the analysis of the packet that is sent to the target system. So four things are actually analyzed. First is the TTL, which is the time to live. Now what operating system sets the time to live is defined at the outbound packet. We also analyze the window size as that helps us determine which kind of OS is running on the server. Like a Linux window size is much smaller than Windows window size. Then we also have the DF flag, which is the don't fragment bit. Now, if packet comes back fragmented, then it's probably running Windows and else is probably running Linux. Then we also analyze the type of service that is a TOS. So analyzing the TOS also gives us much more information about what operating system is being run on the target machine. Now, by analyzing these factors of a packet, you may be able to determine the remote operating system but this method is not 100% accurate and mostly works better for some operating systems than the other. Okay guys, so that was all about an introduction to ethical hacking and its basic processes. We'll be delving down into the tools that are used in ethical hacking like Metasploit and map in the future videos. Please hang on for them. As of for today, we're done. Goodbye.